Greetings. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Associate Professor Dr. Sarah Devi Mahindran Chetiar from uh, Northern University of Malaysia from Program of uh, School of Applied Psychology, Social Work and Policy, College of Arts and Sciences. Today, I'm going to present about uh, my title of uh, or my topic of um, presentation is effective critical strategies for preventing recidivism among juveniles in Malaysia. First of all, I would like to say, convey my thanks to uh, SSHRA 2023 Social Science and Humanities Research Association International Conference for inviting me as your keynote speaker. Well, uh, talking about uh, recidivism, let me give you some uh, introduction on recidivism. Recidivism among juveniles refers to the crime being uh, committed several times, while repetition indicates a continuation of such criminal behavior after they have reached the age of 12 to 21. Recidivism can be used to describe both the original conviction and reconviction that result in another stint in the system, says uh, Julian Ko, Sritar, and Fazil in, in 2019, where else in Malaysia, recidivism here means a, an inmate. Yeah? I used to call prisoners as inmates. I've uh, rebrand or give them a name as uh, inmates. You know. Um, an inmate so, who uh, repeat the same uh, crime so, if a sentenced once and uh, once we after the rehabilitation we send him off and if we repeat again then we call as uh, recidivism in Malaysia well in detail recidivism can be used to describe both the original conviction and reconviction that result in another thing in the system. The number of juvenile offenders in Malaysia has gone up uh, to 2.7 percentage since 2018 according to the Department of Statistics. Right? Uh, on the first offense, 6.7% fever cases were recorded in 2018 compared to the previous year, 2017. While there were more repeated cases than in that many last year of uh, people committing more than six crimes, such a well-known fact was first revealed in the many acts of bullying and delinquency that are reported to be undertaken by students during frequent transition from secondary school to adulthood in Malaysia. Well, the statistic that I'm presenting is up to 2019. We are still a, uh, looking into the recent statistic and um, we will only consider the published statistics. So we are still um, uh, editing on the recent uh, statistics. Therefore, the one that published is up to uh, 2019. All right, in um, um, uh, recidivism, risk factors of uh, juvenile recidivism can divide into two factors. First is dynamic risk factor. Secondly is individual environmental risk factors. All right. According to criminologists, sociologists, geographer, and psychologists have long recognized that an individual living environment shapes behavior patterns, attitudes, and preference and interpretation of the behavior of others. Well, dynamic risk factors, dynamic risk factors can be influenced by intervention, whereas static risk factors cannot. The second one, individual and environmental risk factors. Individual and environmental risk factors are, are subsets of static and dynamic risk factors, respectively, uh, to Unenco, Blackfoot, Faisal, and Malta. Effective critical strategies for preventing recidivism among juveniles. 
Alright, there is a general consensus among authorities that childhood rehabilitation should take into consideration of education, societal reintegration and correction of criminal thinking. Also, these two provisions, namely on approved school and community services help kids stay away from crime. The approach to be adopted here is primarily treatment, but there is an option for the more aggressive treatment called community and institu institutionalism. Juveniles should be given an opportunity to put their misdeeds right through rehabilitation. A mo as most juvenile crime occurs in re relation to inadequate in the social structures. This is related to the community in general as well as the family environment and the values of the neighborhood. The Malaysia Department of Correction has established and rehabilitation for youth for both young convicts. Along with the Putra module which focuses on attitude building along with acquiring knowledge and skills. Reintegration into the community allows normal Normalization of the juveniles. The Putra module is an integrated approach which incorporates both physical and psychological emotional therapy. A module used in Malaysia is called the Character Development Program, which is the basic leadership program, skill program, the advanced leadership program, and the skills enhancement program in the next phases. A life skill approach approaches to rehabilitation incorporates prayer citizenship and mental education all together are four phases well let us look into in detail first phase discipline building program producing inmates who are disciplined and follow all regulation who are active and who live a healthy lifestyle the program is in effect of three months this phase is slowly dedicated to preparing offenders to serve their sentences effectively through four processes. Recording first is recording offenders, personal data and reason for committing crime. Second, obtaining offenders while wow, for good behavior. Third, for categorizing offenders according to sentence. And fourth is basic personal hygiene marching civic education or moral classes, basic regulation, counseling sessions, and cleaning work are all part of this phase. Second phase, right? We have four phases, as I told you earlier. The second phase, now let us look into the second phase. Character reinforcement program is the second phase. To aim to create pro prisoners who have a strong sense of who they are self-identity and attitude enhancing program are e implemented between 6 and 12 months coupled with the strengthening of communal relationship halakha islamic values and uh, academic malaysian certificates all right here a lot of uh, moral uh, programs and, and modules imposed towards uh, uh, inmates uh, in order as part of rehabilitation. But as a third phase, skills program, a major goal of the program is to develop inmates who are able to compete and who may already have a certificate. One of the central activities of the program is career preparation and preparation of individuals for gainful employment, including providing job training and support. Fourth phase is to help prisoners or inmates make it through their time in prison so that they can better adjust to the negative social and economic effects when they are released as this help society cope with their participation in society. All right, okay, when talking about parenting monitoring practices and family involvement, it's very important a family attention and uh, love towards inmates. Fa family involvement and family therapy are strongly recommended as a form of treatment for uh, re-offenders. Reached this conclusion based on two pieces of evidences that show 
family members of offenders were themselves victims of the crime and on those grounds made the family intervention theory relevant to juvenile rehabilitation. The researchers discovered that ju juveniles preferred mediation for both the process and the results. They felt that family members sh showed honesty and were doing their best to be compassionate but most of all they valued the ability to take time out of their busy lives overall it appears to be beneficial to both the offenders and their families that family centered program applies Strengthening the rights of children in criminal proceedings. The rights of children in the, in the Malaysia criminal justice system need to be reinforced and bolstered to ensure their best possible performances in life. Uh, Mustafa suggests implementation of the Convention of the Right of the Ch Child stand standards in regards to existing legislation and existing justice system loopholes on the scope of a specific legal impressions and complicity. He called for some changes to the system of Malaysian juvenile justice, in particular on the protection of children's rights while they are involved in criminal proceedings. First, age of criminal responsibility. This part will aim a section uh, 80 of the penal code which provides for the application of the dolly in in a pack doctrine to apply uh, to all agencies by at least 12 years of age to abolish section 82 which provides the basis for such an application and to specify an implicit set of rules procedures program and institution to be used on children below the minimum age of criminal responsibility. Amendments regarding um, the criminal uh, procedures must be made through the introduction of uh, specific regulations. Regulations state that uh, arrest should be permitted only as a measure of last resort and when they are in the child's best interest to deny children their right to use of freedom cuffs while at the same time imposing additional restrictions on their freedom of access to justice to maintain police power to use discretion by providing notice to children about the reason for arrest after it and allowing access to children pr prior to arrest. Part three focuses on the uh, improvement of the standard practices and uh, facilities with regard to children in legal conflict organized locks to put in place, especially on the development of standards and operating procedures to handle them. Third, to permit further investigation to modify the previous remand, legislation proposed under the Child Act 2016, including the provisions stipulation to reduce the maximum period of remand to seven days, with additional provisions such as to specify that such detention should be avoided to best advantage and to alternative measures in dealing with children should be obtained instead. Fourth is to amend the integration process. Approved by Parliament in May 2016, the Child Act introduces provisions such as the right of children to speak to the investigators with regards to rights to proper legal representation such as speaking for themselves with legal advice and the right of parents, guardians and legal counsels to require the assistance of children in that as part 
of an investigation. Fifth, changing bail settings means specific provisions allowing, uh, allowing any person other than the parent or guardian to post bail. It is suggested that current legislation should be amended to allow a cash bail grant for all individuals, including parents and guardians, rather than requiring a fixed grant for only parents and guardians. So, to specifically that state that children are entitled to a grant of bail in all cases six right to counsel which consists of two part part one amendment of the uh, child act amendment 2016 to introduce a requirement for representation in all phases of the criminal process for children the government's legal aid and defender program should automatically apply to all minors who have not yet been represented in court. It should be defined as immediately to allow for the right to legal representation before the questioning. Part 2. Specific requirements and standards for the portrayal of children as well as, as, well as an aim to set specific standards for who intend to represent children are set for consideration. The new pre-trial uh, detention regulation, which uh, includes amendments to the sixth schedule of the Child Act, six amendment rules and uh, procedures regarding pre-trial children. Seventh, Pre-trial detention, which consists of three parts. Part one, in keeping with the criteria of arbitrary and legalness, these rules should apply to any instances of detention. Children who have special needs show, should have their own hearing to establish if they should be placed in a juvenile. Detention before a court decides whether it is appropriate, the earlier they can be dealt with, the better. As case disposals at the pre-trial detention stage reduce the likelihood of uh, problem as problems at trial. According to the author, the law should be revised to impose uh, requirements as long as those which apply to kids in custody have not been decided to see their case through to trial. Part two, to establish uh, specialized facilities for kids who have not yet had their cases decided and part three, to arrange for their, them in a therapeutic environment with professionally trained staff. Eight, extend the duration of statute-based detention so that it does not apply to children such on security offense. Act uh, 2012 and the Dangerous Drug Act, Special Prevention Measures 1985 and the Preventions of Crime Act 2018 Amendment and Extension. Ninth, Evidence of Children Amendment to Section 133A of the Evidence Act 1950 on following matters to abolish the requirement of subjecting children to competency tests before they are entitled to give evidence to abolish the requirement of collaboration on unsworn evidence of children and uh, to provide adequate facilities and professionally trained staff to facilitate children in the process of giving evidences. Then, separate system of court of, for children by having an entirely separate courtship process for uh, courting minors to grant the court of children the highest jurisdictional in all cases and stipulate that they may sit on all levels of the court. The Stipulations mandate that the court for children must comprise all judges. It is proposed that child judges be appointed to only senior and experienced judges who have at least the rank 
of a sessions of practitioner judges or judges without a minimum of 10 years experience should not be pointed to the court for children to design rules and to deal with this additional issues. The 11th uh, commandment will be to revise the current di division provisions. An uh, amendment was made uh, to the Child Act 2016, which granted the police prosecutor and the courts the authority to design and implement a diversion program for children. This will enable them to uh, institute a formal special board with this responsibility to determine, design and implement a special program for rehabilitation and compensation for child offenders, including programs such as counseling, re-institution, re re reintegration with workers and victim reconciliations. Lastly, is to tracking the implementation of this CRC is to use a specific specialized body to do it final finally we are in the last discussion final perspective is it uh, seems uh, to me that a juvenile delinquency in uh, malaysia is just requires a well-rounded approach in addition to trying to being known a need of education it is important to talk about universal values not just about areas such as moral education, rather community healthcare, psychological aspect of this challenge exists throughout the entire continent. Any kind of social problem can only be handled if it affects the community as a number of people. In order to facilitate treatment, the involvement of all four groups, it is imperative that society rehabilitation uh, institutions and uh, the government each set up families and other institutions each play their own role all right uh, that's all for today i would like to end my presentation here thank you for listening to me ladies and gentlemen if you have any questions uh, you may uh, place at the chat box and i will uh, respond to you as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Eurasia, again. Okay.